Okay, you know exactly what we clicked on. Let's start emptying out parts. I'll see you guys on the other side of the longest time lapse of the channel so far, in all probability. Huh. Well, I appear to have fucked up and missed out a couple parts. I'll build what I can. I'm going to place another Brooklyn quarter anyway. You probably noticed the feet are a little floppy, but I know how to fix that. Make a few of the refinements down there while I'm at it. I'll build what's buildable right now, and then... Well, basically, it's about to jump in the time lapse to another day when I have all of the parts I need, or dug them up from elsewhere. Well, the plot thickens, and I have even more missing parts to contend with. Shit. I'm guessing a Brooklyn color didn't turn up. Everything had, so I guess we're missing something. Still, again, building what I can. It's only the shoulder arm that's affected by this, so that can be fixed at a later date. Yep, nope. This is all I can get for the time being. I'm going to order some more parts and then get back to you all. One week later. <clears throat> right. Back to time lapse.
<sighs> okay, and after a whole lot of uh, emergency parts orders, alteration, during building, that kind of thing, we now finally have completed Cracker. First things first, shout out to Play Pair Toys and Spares on Bricklink. Uh, I basically went mostly with them for this last emergency batch of parts that I'd missed out. I'm also just going to tilt the camera a little and show you that, yeah, that you went for a few uh, revisions during the build. And the extra parts sort of reflect that. That's only a temporary measure. Okay, completely lost my flow there. Nope, kind of what I was going to say. So, Cracker then. Oh yeah, right. Plain repair toys and spares I've mentioned. Um, and yeah, this is a revamp I've really been looking forward to doing, to be honest, because, well, I owned a handful of Titan sets as a kid. I distinctly remember getting the, um, Boparak, Roparak, Boparak, I want to say, three pack of, um, Sidirak Rudaka, Sidirak uh, Rudaka and Kitongo, sorry, camera's higher up, it's, uh, Throwing up a funky flow here. Anyway, yeah, I'm getting that three pack and um, building up his Vulpa rack and just integrating the rest into our parts collection. No regrets. Vulpa rack was a good build and still is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I owned Cracker and I had Lee Cutting Kikanalo as well. And that was kind of it, really, for the um, Titan size sets. I had a couple of larger sets from like. The first few years, but they didn't really so they didn't really solidify into the into the eventual price points at that point, you know. So I don't entirely count those. But yeah, rightly wise, I own the new Jagger and the Manus. Manus were very cool. Anyway, uh, so Cracker then. I always really liked him for some reason, even though the set was janky as hell. I include a few nods to it by just giving him the set's weapons, like the claw thing, which is now arm mounted rather than just being his arm. And the other one is now a handheld thing. So. What is there to say about this about this big good boy then? Well, I say big good boy, he is a dark hunter. He is very, he's very much evil, but, you know. Here's what it is. So. Articulation then. Let's start way down here at the feet. We have the full range of ball joints with the old style rubberized joint that still holds friction pretty well. You know, about a nice degree at the knee. Move the arm out of the way. And full range at the hip. Nothing in the torso. Partly the side effect of how it's built, to be honest, as much as anything else. I needed solidity in there. Some of the larger Titans, when I've revamped since this guy, I've been able to work in sort of more functionality of the torso anyway. I guess in theory, the these joints can count as articulation, but they don't. Because screw that, I'm not going to count bits of torso that can conveniently also move. As it's for design reasons, as part of the articulation. This launcher then is on a ball joint. It can actually it can actually store really nicely as well. I'm going to clean up the uh, shoulder line for more of a movie style look. So let's get that back out and traditional uh, misfire. The traditional shooting at the camera. Hit me in the face. A classic. So, yeah, that's what the disc launcher can do. It can do what a disc launcher does. This should not come as a surprise. Arms then, you have slightly limited range at the shoulder. But both parts of the shoulder armor can get out of the way. And if need be. Which way around does that look? Which way around looks better at this point? Yeah, I mean, you can get sort of the full range outward. Elbow, you got just under 90 degrees. Whoop. Thumb comes off. It's only his job to break thumbs, I reckon. Anyway. Anyway, clip that back on. And... Yeah, hands are on a ball-jointed wrist. Attachment isn't, like, 100% secure, but, like, you know, it's good enough. It's plenty good enough. Especially with the uh, new style ball joints that are good, that have the good friction, so... Fingers, articulate the base, swivel, halfway through, which is surprisingly, it's more useful than you'd think. 
and long term viewers will recall that I stole this ham from my Hodika design. And the ham is now in focus, just for good measure. So, uh, the head then. I bloody love this head design. <laughs> I actually managed to get the movie sort of look, and like, yeah, the string's a bit off colour, but who cares. So the head then, jaw has two points of articulation, so he can fully emote pretty much. Yeah, one of the blue pins here for the leg is a little loose. Actually, hang on, let's just... I think I've ended up with a spare blue pin, have I? Yeah, there's a spare. Let's just uh, flay him down to the bone real quick. Place the pin and see if that solves the uh, issue there. Downside to this guy, as you can probably see, is that he's fairly top heavy and is tilting backwards because I didn't think to include the new style board. Any uh, friction extenders in the hips. I could probably make him a little too tall, is the only issue. A little later, thinking about that now. Honestly, I'm happy with him as he is. You know, he stands fine. He balances fine. He's a good boy, damn it. He's, and yeah, he works for the Age of Mafia, but you know. Deep down, he's still an utter bastard. Anyway. Right, yes, yeah, so will I. Uh, size comparison then. Let's just move the uh, tray of part, tray of extra parts out of the way. And get him straight onto the table. And right the way back so he's fully in shot. Actually, let's angle him looking this way a little bit because then I can. Uh, Slide him across to about here. Bring this arm forward a bit. Oop. Open the hand. And for those of you who haven't already figured it out, this is probably going to be the thumbnail for this video. Go get out of the way. Focus on that. Focus on that. Anyway, I'm back down. Size comparison. Then here he is with my revamped Metro build. He's very wide and difficult to get in shot with anything else, and I realise this and. He is nowhere near as wide as my Nidiki, which, you know, stay tuned, be patient. So, yeah, he's about the height of a Metro build. He can just about look them eye to eye. He can't quite look down, well, my modified Metro build. He can't quite look down on them. However, the standard Metro build is about a head shorter than him. As you can see by the fact that Spooky Metro here has to look up to see him properly. Yeah, he's not going to have a good time. Is that cracker glaring at him? Yeah. And of course, for good measure, let's just uh, pop his disc out of his back. I actually haven't tried this myself yet, but I'm curious as to whether he can manage this. I reckon he can, you know? If you don't drop the thumb, but all important thumb. Not perfect. Well, yeah, one of these uh, ball joints definitely has more friction than the other one. I now realise. 
but he can pick, he can hold a Matoran basically. And yeah, this doubles as size comparison to my Matoran build. <laughs> he is definitely big enough to menace Kongu and threaten him to reverse the suction. So, let's also just get. Kongu back in. Noju back in. Bring in Spooky Metro for good measure. And slide this across. And yeah, scale wise, I'm happy with this. I'm very pleased with this. Like, he feels like a Titan. You know, he, size-wise, he's not much bigger than a Toa, but he's about as wide as two Toa standing side by side. He uses their torso as for arms, and he is a little bit deeper than them as well, with, you know, just all-around bigger body parts. Yes, he's a big, strong boy, and his mother is very proud of him. Does that... Do Stelchins have mothers? Honestly, I have a theory that Stelchins don't have a concept of gender, and just have cast instead, seeing as we just meet two males of different casts. But something can kinda of contradict this, so I'm just gonna head and go ahead and sign that's uh, part of L canon now. Yep. So this has been Lucas Builds. This has been fucking Cracker. And up next Well I have plans to keep things big for a little bit. Until then, until then.